You're listening to an Airwave Media Podcast. Welcome to From Beneath the Hollywood Sign. If you love old movies, Hollywood history, or the golden age of filmmaking, you've come to the right place. This is the podcast that talks about amazing stories of Tinseltown from another era and fascinating conversations with writer-producer Steve Kubine and actress-writer Nan McNamara. So Steve, did Ava Gardner and Howard Hughes have a good relationship? Well, they did until he dislocated her jaw. What? Well, don't worry. She hit him back with an ashtray. From Beneath the Hollywood Sign is the gin joint for you. Recorded in Chicago, Illinois, with your hosts, Ken, Matt, Neil, and Jeff, this is Triviality. The cream of the crop! Hello and welcome to Triviality, the show where lack of seriousness meets a little bit of knowledge. My name's Matt and I will be hosting this final round of our Simpsons tournament. Um, If you missed the first two rounds, they're right there in the feed. Just kind of go back and listen to those and you'll see how Danny, Joe... John and Paul made it to the finals today. Uh, joining me today will be Neil as our co-host who knows nothing about The Simpsons, and he's just going to hang out and score keep, and I guess that's what you're doing. How are you doing, Neil? I'm doing well. Thank you for having me. Thank you uh, for all of The Simpsons fans out there for uh, excusing my lack of knowledge in the subject, but I'm, I'm hoping to learn more. Um, I learned last episode that uh, Steven Spielberg's uh, non-union equivalent is in an episode. So now I absolutely have to watch that episode to see Senor Spielbergo. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, I'm learning some things here, having fun and, um, uh, just appreciative of all the Patreon supporters, including our contestants today for, uh, supporting the show and letting us do these awesome tournaments like this. So thank you. Yeah. I think as a, as a director and writer, I think you'd really enjoy that episode. There's pretty much nonstop, uh, references and kind of like in jokes for that kind of stuff. Did you, did you ever watch the critic? Uh, I did uh, enjoy the cr- uh, critic quite a bit. Yeah. Yeah, so it's a crossover episode where the critics on there, and there's, it's basically a, an excuse to make a bunch of Hollywood in jokes. So, well, um, not to um, to sidetrack it too much, but I there was a podcast I listened to uh, with one of the Simpsons writers, and they wrote an episode. You guys would know better than I would. I think it's more one of the newer seasons, which I know a lot of people don't follow. But uh, I think Krusty, in a past life, like tried to own a studio or something when he met Marge when she was younger. Or there's like a flashback where he's he's in the movie industry, which sounded really interesting to me. But I haven't seen that episode yet. Yeah, it sounds like a newer episode, so we we tend to ignore those. <laughs> Basically, anything past season eleven, <laughs> most most there's like there's like a really divide where Simpsons fans will say, "I only watch the Golden Era," and it's funny because there's now twice as like two times as many episodes that I haven't seen that I have seen, and I'll still consider myself like a huge fan. Um, and there's nothing else in the world where you would only watch or look at one third of something and consider yourself a huge fan. <laughs> but that's that's kind of where we are with The Simpsons, um, which is awesome. So let's meet our contestants uh, in this final round today. Uh, joining us um, back again from Australia, Danny, how is it going? Hey, not bad. And I'm an organic 22 season watcher before I dropped off. Mm, that's, that, that's much more than me. Oh, yeah. Uh, and because there are some episodes where I just decided that I was done, I couldn't do it anymore. But I know yeah, that there's, some there's, of them there, upset me. There are good episodes in the teens, but I just I can't yeah. I can't find them. <laughs> I don't I don't <laughs> want to do it. Um, so we thought it'd be fun um, to for us um, for the finalists to kind of give episode suggestions for Neil because he's trying to kind of mm-hmm. you know get into the Simpsons a little bit. Um, what episode would you think that is like a must watch for a new Simpsons fan? I'm not the best with the names, but I think it's Homer the Krusty, or at the very least, the one where Homer becomes Krusty. Mm-hmm. That is a great episode. It let me know that putting bullet holes in your car makes it go faster. Um, <laughs> something that everyone can learn and understand and make sense. Oh, I'm um, going to have so yeah. to do the muting myself to stop laughing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so good luck today, Danny. Uh, also joining us again is Joe. Joe, how is it going? I'm doing all right. Hope you're doing well too. Mm-hmm. I'm hanging in there. Yeah. You know, this hangover for three weeks now has been crazy. Yeah, but a just, long hangover. Yeah. <laughs> That's all right. I mean, I'm making making do. Um, so, same question for you. What episode would you recommend for Neil? Uh, well, I said my last. Well, I think you'll like the one I re- I said was my favorite was I Love Lisa episode where Ralph uh, and Lisa on Valentine's Day. But uh, another recommendation I would say I think a classic episode would be Homer at the Bat, the mm-hmm. baseball episode. Uh, so many baseball uh, appearances. It's a it's a fun. It's it's a takeoff on the natural. It's a it's a fun. 
it's a fun show to watch. Mm-hmm. Oh, I love The Natural, so that'll be fun then if that's referenced. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it has the great uh, shave those sideburns, Mattingly, mm-hmm. <laughs> which is one of, one of my favorites. And which is when I looked up and learned how much of the that's true with the Yankees, where they require like specific facial hair or like rules with their hair and how they can kind of keep it which is why it was a big deal when i believe they signed jason giambi and he had to shave like his big beard and people were wondering if he would actually sign with the yankees because he was going to have to get rid of his beard which is interesting Uh so good luck today joe also joining us is john how's it going john it's going well um like i said on the last episode i'm a a bit nervous uh (laughs) power competitors here (laughs) uh so same question to you what episode would you recommend for neil you know we've talked about a lot of really great ones but i think one that neil would really enjoy is the radioactive man episode Mm -hmm. uh, where they're filming the they're filming it in springfield because they don't even need correct spelling yeah Yeah, they're they're it said uh flim in springfield correct is that i believe that's how it went yes Um, yeah (laughs) And uh, that was when I first realized that that's where Fall Out Boy got their name from. I didn't even put it together until I watched that episode. Is That's Radioactive Man Sidekick. All right. Well, good luck today, John. Uh, also joining us, our final contestant is Paul. How's it going, Paul? I'm doing all right. Thanks for having me back. <laughs> all right. Uh, and same question to you. What episode would you recommend for Neil? Uh, and, and I, I got to say, I love John's answer. That is so right in Neil's wheelhouse. But uh, w- when you know we were first talking about it, I thought, well, probably uh, Who Shot Mr. Burns 1 and 2 is a good – nobody's seen it before. But if we're going to talk about – well, somebody who has never seen it and we want real root stuff, uh, I am going to say Stark Raving Dad. Mm-hmm. Which <laughs> I don't even know if that episode is available to stream right now. Oh, I think they took right, it. right, yeah. In uh, yeah, a few years ago, they they pulled that, didn't they? Because of uh, it does, Michael Jackson it, and the yeah. allegations and <laughs> well, Disney if you can find it, it, it's a fantastic episode. Yeah, it has uh, Michael Jackson talking but not singing because they were not allowed to have him sing on that episode. And I would suggest for Neil the itchy and scratchy and poochy episode. Um, Because it's basically about writing an episode of TV, um, creating characters and that kind of thing. So I think you'd really kind of get a kick out of that. Um, Network notes and whatever would be probably pretty pretty familiar for you, I would think. Yeah, no, that sounds great. Thank you for all these suggestions. I I will uh, be watching these uh, now that I'm at home and I'm uh, appreciative of all the uh, recommendations. So I will report back. Yeah, I think after watching Itchy and Scratchy and Poochie, you'll understand uh, when are they going to get to the fireworks factory, where that comes from. And that's <laughs> that's that episode. So uh, it, it's kind of like, like a meme factory, more or less. So oh, very awesome. much enjoy it. Um, so if you've listened to the first two episodes, you know how this is going to go. I'm going to ask 15 questions. Um, and then at the round, we're going to name, I guess, uh, the biggest Simpsons expert in trivia. I guess that's what the title is. I haven't actually made a title, but, but we'll hand something out. Uh, the head of Jebediah Springfield. I don't know. We'll figure something out. You guys will get something. Uh, is everybody ready to play the game? Let's do it. Let's do it. Uh, all right, then we'll get right into question one. So, question one. When Bart sells his soul for five bucks to Millhouse, what does he purchase with the money? All right. So, everybody is locked in. Danny, what did you say? I didn't know what they were called. 3 a.m. brain here, but those dinosaur sponges. <laughs> All right. And Joe? Same thing. I don't know what it's called, but it's one of those dinosaur sponges when you soak it in water. It's supposed to expand a lot, but it only expanded a little bit and fell into the drain. All right. And John? I wrote down uh, dinosaur-shaped shrinky dinks. I think that's what they're called. Oh. And Paul? I wrote down grow dinos. <laughs> well, the answer I was looking for was dinosaur sponges, but those are all pretty much the exact same thing. Uh, they're those little, like, capsules that but somehow, you know, get wet and then turn into sponges uh, that we all wasted our money on as kids, probably, I would imagine. So, <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I think I think Bart's imagination of what it was going to turn into is probably one of my favorite things. It's, it's dripping weird water over me. It's great. Yeah, the best part was that he saw her getting eaten by the dinosaur, but not actually getting eaten, just, you know, sponged. <laughs> it was still a sponge, <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. All right, so points all around. Uh, moving on to question two. 
In the Springfield Files, which TJF character does Homer compare the alien to, noting his sweet heavenly voice and penchant for appearing Friday nights? <laughs> locked in. Yeah, I, I, I'm not sure. I don't remember. I'll, I'll lock in. All right. Everybody is locked in. Danny, what did you say? The only, it was the first time I'd heard of this character. It's Urkel. <laughs> Joe? Cool. I guessed Urkel. Oh, John. Steve Urkel, yeah. I also locked in with Steve Urkel. And Paul? All around Urkel. He appeared every Friday night like Urkel. Yep, the answer was Urkel. Um, you said, Danny, this, this is the only time you had ever heard of Urkel was on the show? I mean, to be fair, I would have been about seven when the episode came gotcha. out. I think that's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> there's, a, there's an episode of New Girl where uh, Jess shows some teens um, – Steve Urkel clips, and they think that she discovered some YouTube channel that had weird stuff. And it's <laughs> yeah, that, that would be me. Yeah, it's it's pretty pretty funny. Uh, so points all around there too. Uh, so moving on to question three: How many tons of American pride is the Canyon Arrow? Damn, just, a, just very just tentative sing the, lock in. Oh, <laughs> sing yes. sing the song in your head, you'll get there. Mm -hmm. Unexplained fires are a matter for the courts. <laughs> so I was bouncing back and forth between uh, I, I'm I am actually singing the song in my head right now <laughs> and uh, I'm bouncing back and forth between 11 and a half and 12 and a half tons so I think it's 12 and a half and that's what I'm going to lock in with okay so you were locked in John uh, Danny what did you say boy my answer was way off that one I was going way higher I thought it was something like I put 68 okay Joe all right not sure. I said 16 tons of American pride. I'm not sure, though. And Paul. Uh, I think we're all around it. I think it's 65. It is 12 yards long, two lanes wide, 65 tons of American pride. <sighs> Good job. <laughs> the 12 yards long threw me way off. Yeah. <laughs> I could tell once you, you're, you're at the, the wrong end there, but... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, you, you knew, and you didn't get the S version, which, uh, was that the S version that had the lipstick holder instead of a <laughs> cigarette lighter? The F series. Sorry. F series, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. There you go. Joe, I wonder um, if you were thinking of the uh, Tennessee Ernie Ford song, 16 Tons, the real low. That's probably what it is. I thought that's exactly yeah. what I, that's, <laughs> sounded familiar. I guess didn't know, yeah, what it is. <laughs> it's one of those things where you know something, but you don't know where it's from. So mm -hmm. you just kind of, just kind of roll with it. Yep. All right, so we'll move on to question four. What is the name of the lighthouse attendant that Homer is convinced is his soulmate after going on a journey given to him by the space coyote? This was originally a question about who voiced the space coyote, but I think everybody knew that one. Mm, yeah. Can we please change it to that? <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I'm going to have to tap on this one. I Yeah, I've got nothing here. This is the finals. These are tough ones, you yeah. know, bringing up the big guns. Well, since everyone's locked in, I know that it's it's not a real person. It's like a robot. I cannot remember what it is, though. Uh, I'm going to just I, I got to guess I'll lock in. OK, uh, so everyone's locked in. Uh, Danny, what did you say? Well, I don't remember what it stands for, but it's Earl. And electronic Joe? automatic. Yeah. Yes. I can't believe I pulled it. It's I said Earl because I remember it was an acronym. The L was a light was for lighthouse. Uh, so I said Earl. <laughs> All right, John. I wrote down Lighthouse Keeper 5000, which is absolutely wrong. <laughs> and Paul? No, I tapped. Yeah, and the answer was Earl. I mean Earl. Uh, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> the the uh, Electronic Automatic Robotic Lighthouse. I remember seeing Marge care, uh, throw out that big box of Sylvania light bulb and replace it with a new one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so that the ship wouldn't crash and spill its hot pants i believe yeah the, what's the precious cargo <laughs> all right so moving on to question five who is the original founder of springfield yeah locked in yeah i'll lock in too locked in all right so everybody is locked in danny what did you say no i'm scared uh, i put hans sprungfeld <laughs> okay joe oh, darn it yeah i I had both Hans Springfield, but I went with Jebediah Springfield, but I think that's a trick question because the actual plot point of the story. <laughs> so that's why I locked in with Jebediah Springfield. All right, John? Uh, I mean, so I'm pretty sure that he was going by Jebediah Springfield when he founded it, but it, yeah, 
Jebediah Springfield is what I locked in with. All right, Paul. And yeah, I, I, I worry that it was a trick question. And when she said Hans Sprungfeld, I'm like, is that it? But he was going by Jebediah Springfield and that's what I put. Yeah, well, they are the same person. So I will accept okay. both Jebediah Springfield and Hans Sprungfeld. That is fair. Uh, I put it out of total Jebediah. habit, not out of expecting to trick anyone. <laughs> that's one of those questions. I, when I realized it was this late in the game, I was like, eh, they might think it's a trick question, but no, it's just a, just a regular question. It's just an easy question. Oh, we question. thought it was a trick question. We did. I know. <laughs> Absolutely. I almost said. Yeah, I'm glad my Jebediah just paid off. <laughs> the other the other question I was going to ask there was uh, was the last name of the she- Shelbyville uh, founder if anyone knows that one that was going to be the question Manhattan yeah Shelbyville Manhattan. Manhattan nice they named the town Shelbyville instead very funny I didn't even get that was a joke until much much later uh, so after five questions Neil what are the scores all right in second place is John with three points and tied for first a three way tie Paul Joe and Danny with four so very close. Ooh. All right, let's move on to question six. What is the secret ingredient in a flaming mo? All right, everyone is locked in. Danny, what did you say? All right, it was the kid's cough syrup. Okay, Joe? Krusty's non-narcotic cough syrup. <laughs> and John? Yep, Krusty's Krusty brand non-narcotic cough syrup. All right, and Paul? Krusty brand non-narcotic children's cough syrup. <laughs> the answer was Krusty brand non-narcotic cough syrup, so... <laughs> Points all around there. Um, they do sell a flaming Homer, I believe, at the uh, or flaming Mo, whatever they want to call it, at uh, Simpsons Land out here. But it shut down before I was able to go, sadly. So <laughs> I got so, to go to the one in Florida, the Simpsons Land in Florida. It was really cool. Question seven, played by David Hyde Pierce in a delightful Frasier reunion. What is the name of Sideshow Bob's brother? Locked in. Locked in. Locked in. Locked in. All right, everybody appears to be locked in. Danny, what did you say? Cecil. And Joe? Uh, Cecil Terwilliger. John? Cecil Cecil Terwilliger. Ah. (laughs) And Paul? Yeah, the brother from another series is Sideshow Cecil. (laughs) All right. And the answer was Sideshow Cecil, um, who I believe went four years at Clown College. Is that what I heard? Was that Paul? Thank you not to talk about Speaker (laughs) Princeton that way. (laughs) Excellent. Yeah, that I think there was another episode where they had the the dad from the show on as well, and they did a full kind of John Mahoney. Oh yeah, they had a whole family on at one point. It's it's the one after the one where they find Sideshow Bob in Italy, right? It's the follow on to that. Like that, yeah. Sideshow Bob's death. Yeah. Yes, that's it. That's that's in one of those uh, seasons that I didn't watch as much. (laughs) <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> All right. Moving on to question eight. In Bart the Lover, the writers had originally wanted to use football legend Johnny Unitas as the picture for Woodrow as Edna's newspaper lover, but settled for this hockey legend instead. Locked in. Locked in. Locked in. Locked in. I think that's his name. All right. Uh, Danny, what did you think that name was? Was it Gordy Howe? And <laughs> Joe? Well done, Gordy Howe. Woo. John? Gordy Howe. And Paul. All around, Gordy Howe. <laughs> the Gordy Howe hat trick. Everyone gets Is he a famous that. person? Um, kind of. Yeah. yeah. Okay. We don't do that. We, we don't yeah. have ice here. <laughs> Even more credit to you as the Australian. Well done. He's he's one of those guys that was popular, that was really big when my father watched hockey and I yeah. didn't, but cultural osmosis in our house, I use Gordy Howe as the answer for many, many hockey questions. Gotcha. If I'm not yeah. answering Gretzky, I'm probably answering Gordy Howe. <laughs> yeah. It's Fair basically, enough. did he wear a helmet? It's Gretzky. Did he not wear a helmet? It's Howe. That's kind of, that's where you, you'll you kind of figure out that line there. Um, you and you'll be right 50% of the time. Okay. So remember that for trivia. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on to question nine. What is Homer's mother's name? Locked in. Okay. Everyone's locked in. Danny, what'd you say? I like when she went by Muddy Mae Suggins, but I think the one that was actually her name was Mona. Okay. Joe. I also said Mona. And John. I also said Mona. And Paul. Yep. Mona it is. <laughs> It's funny because I did write down Muddy May Suggins on there. But yes, Mona Simpson is correct. Uh, moving on to question 10. 
Uh, Barton made several prank phone calls to Moe's Tavern before one actually backfired, where this man was in the bar and willing to answer the phone. Give me one second. I, I know this is going to come to me. I think you'll get it. I think you'll get it. I, I, I know I will. Yep, locked in. All right. Um, so everybody is locked in. Danny, what did you say? Hello, this is Hugh Jazz. <laughs> and Joe? Hugh Jazz. All right, John? Yep, this is a prank call that kind of backfired on me, and I'd like to bail out. It is Hugh Jazz. <laughs> <laughs> and Paul? What a nice young man. It was Hugh Jazz. <laughs> And the answer was huge ass. Uh, and they kind of dropped the the uh, prank phone calls pretty quickly after about season two or so. But uh, some of them are pretty funny. Um, that one, not as much. But that's okay. Um, was that question 10? That Neil, was or? question 10, yeah. Uh, it was funny hearing that question because when I was in... Uh, grammar school I, I remember all the kids used to be uh to, you know to make prank fall phone calls or whatever and um i realized a lot of those references were from the simpsons um me personally and my friends we used the arnold schwarzenegger soundboard uh for our <laughs> prank calls uh like who <laughs> who's your daddy and what does he do how are you i'm a cop i'm a cop you idiot <laughs> yeah so um but uh yeah uh after 10 questions so this the second half of the uh the, the first batch of questions there, everyone was perfect. So still very, very close. We have uh, John <gasps> with eight and Danny, Joe, and Paul with nine. So very tight. Brutal. <laughs> I think I'm going to have to get those tiebreaker questions ready, to be honest. But that's okay. You know, more questions, more Simpsons content. People can't be mad about that. Uh, so moving on to question 11. What is the name of the mascot of the rival school, Springfield A&M, that Homer and the nerds kidnap and Homer goes to college? <laughs> uh, does it does it help if I know that he and Mr. Simpson split a case of malt liquor? <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm locked in. Mm. Okay, so everyone is locked in. Uh, what is the name that the dean can hear the pig fainting? Uh, oh, I Danny. was going to say that. <laughs> Danny, uh, what did you say? Uh, rolled up in a carpet and thrown off a bridge. So oinks a lot. Uh, Joe? I sat on this for a little while. I knew it was a pig. I said, oink. it's not oinky. It's something like that. I said, sir, oinks a lot. <laughs> All right. And uh, John? I cannot believe it. I also said, sir, oinks a lot. <laughs> All right. And Paul? I just <laughs> put it together. And the, the tie continues. Sir oinks a lot. <laughs> right. The answer was Sir oinks a lot. And that was that was a real tough one. So good job on that one, you guys. Uh, moving on to question 12. In Bart Carney, what game do Cooter and Spud run? Locked in. Locked in. Locked in. All right. Everyone is locked in. Danny, what did you say? The, the ring toss boys. All right, Joe. I said ring toss. And John? Uh, yes, the crooked ring toss game. <laughs> <laughs> and Paul? Yeah, one ring over the chimney for the house. They ran the ring toss. <laughs> yeah. The answer? It's a ring toss game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that's a that's another pretty pretty outstanding episode when uh, right. When Skinner goes from the uh, trying to win the TV to the knife because his yeah. mom is a uh, <laughs> is, is it really possible to win this game, Simpson? <laughs> <laughs> if I like it, it is. All right. So moving on to question 13. In the Springfield Files, Homer is in the mood to try something different than his usual duff and goes with red tick beer. What is the secret ingredient in red tick beer that gives it its flavor? I don't know it. I locked in with something dumb. Every, everyone's locked in. Danny, what did you say? I said it, it needs more dog. <laughs> All right. Uh, Joe? That's right. I said uh, I made a stupid callback. It's uh, Mitt's iodine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, John? I have dog. And Paul? Yep, dog swimming laps in the, uh, in the vat. <laughs> yeah, the answer was dogs. Uh Funny enough, so for a while when I was on OK Cupid, my name was Needs More Dog, and a lot of people thought that I just really liked dogs, and nobody got that it was a Simpsons reference. <laughs> you know, that's why you didn't match with anyone. <laughs> yeah, that's why I'm still single. You're right. All right, moving on. <laughs> moving on to question 14. According to Jacques, what fruit does brunch come with? It's a good meal. 
Locked, locked in. in. Locked in. All right. Everyone is locked in. Danny, what did you say? Cantaloupe. And Joe? Oh, I said grapefruit. And John? It comes with a little bowl of cantaloupe at the end. Darn it. That's what it is. And Paul? Yep, a little bowl of cantaloupe. The answer is cantaloupe. I haven't seen that episode so much, but I have seen the clip show that is referencing that one an awful <laughs> lot. Yeah, I think it's season one, isn't it? The yeah. 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 Season one is so absolutely dark. Yeah. God, it's there have crazy. marital issues. Homer tries to commit suicide. It's terrible. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, and then the one episode where home is the serious one. Yeah. 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 And, and oh. Orange is the lush. <laughs> Oh, God, it, it was a rough rewatch when I was yeah. rewatching it. Luckily, we got more seasons, so we can ignore that, that one as much as possible, except for when we're <laughs> answering questions about it. So we're going to move on to question 15, the last question in this round, assuming there's no tiebreakers, but there might be. Uh, question 15, in Treehouse of Horror 2, Homer uses a monkey's paw to make wishes that all backfire horribly. What is wrong with the turkey sandwich that he wishes for? Locked in. <laughs> Locked in. Locked in. Also locked in. All right, everyone is locked in. Danny, what did you say? I said the turkey's a little dry. And Joe? The turkey's a little dry. <laughs> John? The turkey is a little dry. And Paul? The turkey's a little dry. No! <laughs> <laughs> the answer was the turkey was a little dry. Uh, great job, everybody there. Uh, so that concludes this round. Neil, what are the scores? All right, so uh, Joe uh, is uh, bringing up the rear with 12 points. John has 13 points and tied for first right now with 14 are Danny and Paul. So we do have a tie for first Ooh. place here. Damn that canyon arrow. <laughs> <laughs> it's, well it's done, crazy. everyone. That's awesome. Yeah. 65 tons of saving my ass. <laughs> It's funny because 12 and 13 would have both won the previous round, but, but those are in last place. So you guys clearly know your Simpsons. So we're going to get into some tiebreaker questions. Uh, so this is for Danny and Paul. Uh, tiebreaker question number one. What is the name of Lisa's pony in Lisa's pony? All right. Locked in. I'm locking in. Okay. Uh, Danny locked in first. What did you say? I said princess. And Paul? Well, we're sinking or swimming together. I said princess. <laughs> this is like was, heads or tail where we both pick heads. <laughs> the answer was princess. Uh, so we're going to move on to tiebreaker number two. In the Stonecutters episode, it's revealed that Abe Simpson is a member of multiple organization. Other than Stonecutters, name three of them. All right. Locked in. All right. I'm locked in. All right. Danny, what did you say? That's this is tricky. The first one, I know what it sounds like, but I have no idea what the word is, so I skipped it. And I went with he's a Mason, a communist, and he's president of the Gay and Lesbian Alliance. For some reason. Uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, Paul, what did you say? Yeah. <laughs> Mason, communist, president of the Gay and Lesbian Alliance for some reason. Yep, those three are correct. The one you're missing was Elk. He's also an Elk, <sighs> which I guess is, That's I don't know if it's a real what? one. I oh, think sure. it's, is it a real yeah, one? There's, there's, there's an Elks not, not a half a mile down the road from me. Oh, uh, we, we have Moose out. The Moose Lodge is out here instead. So Benevolent think, and pr- Protective Order of Elks. Okay. They're like, cool. uh, things you like, learn. thought it'd be a water buffalo too, but I guess it's a different <laughs> show. Uh, so we, we can move on to tiebreaker number three. In Homer versus the 18th Amendment, what is the name of the detective who is out to discover the Beer Baron's identity? Uh, locked in. Locked in. All right, Danny, what did you say? I think he's Rex Banner. Okay, and Paul? Rex Banner. (laughs) (laughs) All right, well, the answer is Rex Banner. Um, So, I am going to have to come up with some other questions. (laughs) I I don't know. I I mean, mutual first place. Uh, We can revel in that glory for a while. (laughs) You know, we haven't done that before, but I think, Neil, if you're okay with it, I think we can crown co-champions if that's all right. Uh, Unless yeah. that would be unsatisfying. No, I mean, it is the Australian thing to do in, in Australian rules football. Uh, as Danny said, she doesn't know too much about, but uh, my Magpies uh, in the final game of one of the seasons recently ended in a tie. So 
if you guys are okay ending in a tie, we can totally do that. And you can be co-champions, uh, international co-champions across the world. So whatever you think. Love it. According Very to good. the rules, I, I think they both have to mow each other's lawns in their Sunday dresses, though. <laughs> that is true. Yeah, okay. I think, why, why, do I not, why do I have to wear my own Sunday dress? I want to wear my wife's. As yeah. long as the uh, show is going to pay for the airfare, I'm fine with it. <laughs> yeah. It's the, uh, the, the winner is the child who did not win. Is that how it worked? I don't remember now. Uh, so, yeah, perfect. Um, I guess we have co-champions because this probably can go on forever. Uh, Paul and Danny, you really know your Simpsons, so congratulations. Uh, right. Yeah, congratulations. Great job. And, oh, yeah, great job, John Jar. Fantastic. Yeah, I think I think uh, you couldn't go wrong with any of you guys. You guys really know know your stuff. Uh, I think if I if I asked later season questions, it might have been a little trickier. But uh, oh yeah. yeah, you guys, great job there. Uh, so I guess we'll start with Joe. Um, you know, came up a little short. Uh, thank you for being on. But uh, how do you think it went overall? This is a blast. Uh, you know, I I, uh, I love the show. I grew up watching the show. It's one of the defining pieces of uh pop culture and comedy and i am glad to be sharing this experience with y'all glad to see you have this fun time with other simpsons followers simpsons fans mm-hmm. awesome and uh john same question for you uh the the, comp- the competition did not disappoint these were fantastic questions matt uh i had a great time and uh I think I, I almost think we've made like all the best Simpsons references on the on the outros. So I, <laughs> <laughs> I'll just go. I'll just go back to uh, everyone. Definitely embiggen their uh, their their role in this promulent performance. <laughs> awesome. Uh, and uh, Paul, so same question for you. Uh, yeah, well, uh, I totally forget what the question was now. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't really a question. Just talk <laughs> about it. Say. Wait, wait, was there yeah. a question? I don't remember. No, I, I, had, I had a fantastic time with this. Thanks. Thanks so much for having me. Uh, I feel I've redeemed myself from the, uh, uh, the, the rom-com tournament, which uh, did not go quite as well as this, <laughs> but, uh, thank you so much for having me. I, I had, a, had a great time and, uh, a very worthy co-champion. This this was terrific. <laughs> awesome. And Danny, thank you so much for staying up till whatever time in the morning it is. Out, out I'll Australia. just stop mentioning it. It's getting upsetting. But yeah, yeah, this was wonderful. They really were very good questions. So good on you. And yeah, co- co-congratulations, co-Paul. Awesome. Uh, thank you for the kudos on writing the questions because I really enjoyed writing them. I'm glad that you guys got most of the jokes and pretty much made the same references I was about to right before I did. So uh, great job, everybody there. Neil, did you learn a lot about The Simpsons today? Uh, I did learn a lot about The Simpsons. Uh, there are many references uh, that I can see where they come from now. Uh, so thank you for letting me co-host today. And I, if if I remember correctly, John said that he wrote a full game of Simpsons trivia. So maybe what we'll have to do is have John host, bring back Joe, Danny, and Paul, and then Matt, you perform, and then it'll be a uh, a fatal four way with all Simpsons questions uh, hosted by John. Maybe nice. as sort of a fun. Oh hell yeah! Yeah, fun bookend. Yeah, yeah. I, I still have it saved. So <laughs> wonderful. I would I would love to play. That would be <laughs> that would be pretty pretty fun for me. Uh, so if you guys enjoy these tournaments um, and would love to play in one of the ones we have coming up, like we're recording a, a community one possibly coming up, and some of the other shows. Um, if you're interested in that, just make sure you join us on, on the crop on Facebook. Uh, it's our fan page. It's where we post these announcements, um, and then we kind of get our competitors through there. And we really do appreciate most. Uh, we pick through our page. Patreon supporters first if they're if they're interested. So, um, if, you know, if you're wanting to play in one of the tournaments and you're a Patreon supporter, just make sure you're checking us out on the crop. We really do appreciate it. Um, and that'll wrap up our Simpsons tournament. Uh, so be on the lookout for our next one, whichever one it is. We love doing these. So um, for Neil, for Danny, Joe, John, and Paul, my name is Matt, and that was Triviality. Triviality.